Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remaster, and see how it compares to the original version of the game released almost exactly a decade ago. For this comparison, both the remaster and the original game will be played on the same PC, with the settings cranked up to their highest available options at a native 4K resolution. However, the motion blur options will be disabled to provide cleaner still images. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first looking at our car models, starting with the Porsche Boxster Spider. Now, surprisingly, not much has really changed at all in the past 10 years. It appears the developers that worked on the remaster, Stellar Entertainment Limited, have decided to retain the exact same models used before. This means that the poly counts, the texture surfaces, and other details are virtually identical between versions. However, there are some subtle differences that you can probably pick up on as a result of the slight adjustment to the game's lighting effects. While this tweak does make some of the reflective surfaces stand out more prominently, it does also seem to hide some of the finer details, like the corrugated ridges along these headlamps, or the LEDs in this taillight. This degradation in quality can be observed with pretty much every other vehicle in the game. Though, to make up for it, the remaster does at least offer far superior anti-aliasing options that greatly help to reduce the amount of jagged edges along the body of the vehicles. And I also found that some of the vehicle decals, like the number on top of this cop car, now appear more crisp. But other than those few changes, these vehicles look and behave identically to the original version. So now let's take a look at the environments. The environments, like the car models, appear to be virtually identical at first glance, with the same level geometry, vegetation density, and design. However, upon closer inspection, there are a few small tweaks that can be found throughout. The surface textures, for example, actually appear worse in the remaster than before, especially the road and the dirt surrounding it. It almost feels like it's using a lower quality texture, but I did confirm that the max setting was enabled when recording this. What's even stranger though is that this isn't necessarily the case everywhere. Some textures, like this one outside of the playable area, actually look a little bit sharper. And then there's environmental props like this tree that seem to sport higher resolution texture maps now. There's even some new bushes that, while retaining the same general shape, appear more dense and a little bit more blurry. The entire makeup of this track area is just a mixed bag, and it's difficult to really decide whether it looks better or worse. But there's nothing about it that's actually different from a format or gameplay perspective, which should appeal to purists. The only change that I think is actually noticeable though, is the lighting. The Hot Pursuit remaster has a much brighter appearance to it, with ambient light more effectively illuminating surfaces like roads, environmental objects, and of course the vehicles. Bloom effects are more noticeable now, and darker scenes like nighttime races are much brighter and easier to see even without changing any of the game's brightness options. Car reflections also reflect more clean, high-resolution images, rather than the very blurry, indistinguishable reflections used before. It's nothing necessarily groundbreaking, but it's an improvement nonetheless. Shadow effects have also seen a few minor improvements, with softer edges that appear a bit more naturally, especially with things like bushes and tree leaves. And you'll even notice that some props that didn't cast shadows before, like these power lines, now do cast shadows in the remaster. The effects are another area where the developer decided to make a few changes. First, the particle density for collisions has been increased a significant amount, so sparks while scraping against the guardrails, and the small metal fragments and paint chips from high-speed collisions are all much more dramatic now. There's even more water particles that will kick up from the tires when driving on wet pavement though it is a little bit more blurry now. Additionally, the damage model has been altered a bit, with more complex scratch marks and a complete rework to the broken windshield effect. However, I do think the broken windshield looked a bit better in the original version, as it offered that nice variation with different shades of blue and green. And the overall look of a vehicle after a direct head-on collision is disappointing in the remaster, with barely any vehicle deformation at all. Finally, let's wrap up with a few sound comparisons. Which version do you think has the superior audio quality?
situation. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, I'm pretty disappointed with the quality of this remaster. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit was a pretty decent looking game when it released back in 2010, but its visuals have most certainly not held up since then. There was a lot of room for improvement here, from the car models that are fairly basic by today's standards, to the environment that feels incredibly stale and lifeless. Even the lighting could have benefited from some improvements, with things like volumetric effects or even real-time ray tracing options being potential options that could have been pursued. What's more, there's some areas that inexplicably look worse, like the road and dirt textures or the vehicle damage effects. Now, if you haven't played Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, it's definitely still worth picking up and playing, as it's a great arcade racing experience that shares a lot of its DNA with the classic Burnout games, including the easy to handle drifting mechanics and the ability to sideswipe and take out opponents in spectacular ways. But considering the remaster actually looks worse in more areas than it looks better, I can't say I'd recommend this version of the game, at least not on the PC. Now, if you're playing on console, you can look forward to some nice improvements, like more stable frame rates and a higher resolution. But if you already own the game on Origin or Steam, then you probably won't see much of an improvement upgrading to the remaster. The one nice feature that is worth mentioning though is the new crossplay option which allows players on the PC to participate in online activities with players on other consoles. Though, unfortunately, the PC version is also needlessly locked to 60 FPS, a decision that many enthusiast PC gamers will likely be disappointed with. But what do you guys think? Do you like what the developers did with this remaster, or were you expecting more? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.